What's up, Dennis Athletes? Today I'm gonna to be showing you three calisthenic skills that anyone can start learning no matter where you are. It takes zero equipment and it's gonna completely transform your physique and tremendously improve your skill set. Now you've probably seen these three skills somewhere and thought to yourself, yeah, I'm never gonna be able to do that. But the truth is you definitely will. You just need to know what to train and how to train for it. And that's what I'm gonna be showing you today. These three skills are also fundamentals to calisthenics. So they're gonna have you progress very quickly as every other more advanced skill like the full planche, full planche pushups, handstand pushups, and so much more stems from the three exercises that I'll be showing you today, which is why these three skills are gonna condition and strengthen your body to be able to do more advanced exercises that require you to lift your body off the ground from your hands. And using your entire body weight for every rep is also gonna completely transform your physique. Not just because you're working with a heavier overload, but also because you're recruiting a lot more muscle groups at once. And if you need more information and routines along the way, just download the Thenix app in the App Store or Google Play Store into complete programs that you can follow along to and work towards every single week to finally achieving your goals. Like the millions of Thenix athletes around the world that have used these same technique guides in the app to unlock these skills. All right, smash that like button and let's get right into it. The first skill we're gonna be breaking down is the L-sit hold. A lot of people have trouble with this exercise, but I'm gonna show you how to train for it as a complete beginner from the very beginning. And that's gonna be flexibility, hip flexor strength, core strength, and shoulder depression strength. We're gonna be covering all four of those in these progressions. So regularly stretching your hamstrings is gonna make it a lot easier. If you need some hamstring stretches and more info on the L-sit, check out the video I did, how to L-sit hold on the floor. Now let's start off with the very first progression and keep in mind for the rest of this video, when it comes to calisthenics training, it's just like weights where we increase the resistance over time using progressive overload, but instead of using weights, we use harder and harder progressions. With each progression, the angle of position will change, allowing more body weight to be applied. Once you're able to do an exercise comfortably with perfect form for the required amount of repetitions, then you're ready to move on and attempt the next harder progression. Now starting off with the very first progression that anyone can do to start learning the L-sit hold, we're going to sit with our back straight and flat against the wall, hands down on the ground, depressing with your shoulders, and we're going to try to lift up our legs just like that. Now, if that's too hard, you can always start with one leg first. You wanna be able to do 10 with each leg, and then eventually being able to do 10 with two legs. This move is gonna strengthen your hip flexors as well as increase the flexibility in your hamstrings. Once you can do 10 pumps with both legs, then I want you to attempt to hold that position for at least 10 to 15 seconds. All right, so there you have it. Master these progressions. Once you can do them comfortably with perfect form for the required amount of repetitions, you're ready to move on and attempt the next progression. Now moving on to progression number two, we're gonna be going for a tucked L sit. Instead of doing it on the floor, we're gonna be doing it on an elevated surface. This is gonna require less core and hip flexor strength, so it's gonna be the best and easiest place to start off. And eventually, the better and stronger you get, you can move it down to the floor. So first things first, let me show you what it looks like, then I'll break it down. Now to get into this exercise, you first wanna start off by just sitting down at the edge of your chair. Place your palms on the surface and push down and depress your scapulas as hard as you can while lifting your knees up and engaging your core. Now this is a static hold, so the goal is to increase your hold time. And when you're first starting off, you may only be able to hold it for a second or two and that's okay. Go for three attempts in a row, every minute on the minute until you improve. Eventually the more you do it, the stronger you're gonna get. And over time, you wanna to attempt to hold it even longer and longer and break your record until you can comfortably hold it with perfect form for at least 15 seconds, then you're ready to move on to the next progression. All right, there you have the tucked L-sit hold. All right, moving on to the third progression. Now we're gonna increase the difficulty and bringing it down to the floor with tucked L-sit walks. Let me show you what it looks like, then I'll break it down for you. Now to start off with this exercise, of course you wanna start off in a tucked L-sit position. Place your hands on the ground just a little bit forward, then depress your scapulas down while lifting your knees and your hips. You'll take just a small step and keep inching your way forward for at least 10 reps. Now if this is too difficult, you can always try doing this with your feet on the ground. One foot on the ground and eventually no feet on the ground. All right, so there you have it, the tucked L-sit walks. This is gonna be more difficult than the tucked L-sit you did before because there's a lot less room for your legs, which means you need even more hip flexors, core strength, and shoulder depression to be able to lift your body high enough off the ground. But this is gonna directly prepare you and build your strength to being able to do the real L-sit hold. And by this point, you're already getting comfortable with lifting your entire body weight for reps. And now is when you're gonna start to see your body and skills really transform. Now, once you can do this comfortably with perfect form for at least 10 repetitions, then you're ready to move on and attempt the next progression. Now, moving on to the fourth progression, we're gonna be going for L-sit kicks. This is gonna be a lot more difficult, but by this time, you should have developed a lot more upper body strength. So let me show you what it looks like, and then I'll break it down for you. 
You wanna be able to start in a tucked L sit position, then kick your legs out to full range of motion, completely locked out and straight, and then bring them back into a tucked position. You wanna be able to do this as controlled as possible. But when you're first starting off, you may not be able to go all the way out and it may not be that controlled, but that's okay. Keep doing it every minute on the minute, maxing out, and eventually you get stronger and you'll definitely improve. And again, I'm starting you off on a higher elevated surface so that you have more room for your legs, but eventually you wanna build the strength and flexibility to be able to do it on the ground. But once you can do the tucked L sit kicks with perfect form comfortably for at least 10 repetitions, you're ready to attempt the last and final progression to master your L-sit hold. All right, so there's the L-sit kicks. That last one, I just held it for a little bit longer, but just to give you an idea that the better you get at this, eventually you'll be able to kick out and just hold your legs out there, completing the L-sit. All right, moving on to the last and final progression. After this, you should definitely be able to master your L-sit hold. We're gonna be going for tucked L-sit hold, alternating legs. I'm gonna show you what it looks like and then break it down for you. It's very similar to the previous progression, but we're just gonna hold one leg out for a second, bring it in and then alternate. Now, when you first start off, you may be doing it really fast and sloppy, but just like with every progression, the goal is to eventually do it controlled with perfect form. You wanna be able to do it for at least 10 reps with perfect form comfortably, and then you're ready to move on to the harder variation of this progression. The next way to do it would be to have one leg completely extended, have one leg tucked, so you're alternating with one leg sticking out. And for a second there, as you're switching legs, you're actually holding an L-sit with both legs out. And the more you do this, you're gonna get stronger, and eventually over time, you're just gonna be able to put them both out. And you're gonna be able to hold that L-sit, even if it's just for a couple seconds, and then you know what to do. Attempt your L-sit hold every minute on the minute, increase your hold time, and there you have it, you mastered your L-sit. And once you've mastered the L-sit, you could then move into L-sit pull-ups, L-sit to handstand, front levers, start learning your plant, and so much more because you have the strength and ability to hold your entire body weight off the ground. And now we're ready for the second skill. Moving on to the second skill, I'm gonna be showing you how to master, that's gonna be the 90 degree hold, and this is a very important exercise to have in your arsenal. This exercise is not only gonna develop insane upper body strength, but allow you to hold your entire body weight from a horizontal position and even rep it out eventually. Developing superhuman strength in your shoulders shoulders, arms, core, as well as your lower back. And I'm gonna be showing you the very first progression that anyone can start doing to start mastering this exercise. That's gonna be a push-up hold. So all we're gonna do is get down on the ground and hold the bottom of the push-up. Right now, we're just building the foundation. You wanna be able to hold this position very comfortably and with perfect form for at least 45 seconds. When you're at the bottom of your push-up, make sure that you're engaging everything in your body and your body should be in a complete straight line, not drooping and not too high, completely horizontal. You also wanna have your arms tucked in and not flared out to ensure that you're really using your arms as well. But for a complete breakdown with more in-depth info on how to do this, as well as eventually being able to rep planche push-ups, check out the video on how I went from 20 push-ups to planche push-ups. And check out the technique guide in the Thenix app if you you haven't downloaded it already. You look at the end result, it may seem impossible, but as you can see now, you've already started training for it. It's definitely doable. All right, for the second progression, we're gonna be emphasizing on strengthening our glutes as well as our lower back. That's actually what lifts the rest of our lower body. So for this exercise, we're just gonna need an elevated surface and we're gonna go for some leg raises. So we're gonna lay down, bring it in and extend. Make sure to really feel your lower back and your glutes every time you extend. Lock out your legs, keep it straight. Now when you get really comfortable with this, you wanna be able to hold it for time. There you have it, the second progression. Again, not too difficult. As you can see, we're building that foundation one block at a time. That's gonna make it easier to move on to the harder progressions. And it's gonna compound when you put it all together to do some extraordinary things. So once you're able to do the reverse leg raises for at least 15 reps comfortably with perfect form and hold it for at least 15 to 20 seconds comfortably, then you're ready to attempt the next progression. All right, moving on to progression three, things are gonna get a little more difficult. We're gonna be going for pseudo planche push-ups. I'm gonna show you what that looks like and then we're gonna break it down. Slightly different from the normal push-up, you wanna lean as far as possible so that your hands are by your waistline and then you wanna push from there. Now it looks simple, but it's actually pretty difficult to do when you're first starting off. So for your first time or your first couple times, don't go all the way down to your waistline. Just put your hands slightly lower and eventually you'll develop more strength to be able to put your hands lower, lower, lower until you can comfortably push by your waistline. It's also gonna help the range of motion in your wrists to have your hands slightly pointed out with your thumbs pointing forward. Also, when first starting this progression, you may feel like as you're pushing, your body is sliding back and your hands are coming back up to the top. So one thing you can do to help fix that and to maintain that position is to put your feet against the wall. That will also help indicate on your progress of how low your hands are going. So with your feet pushed against the wall, you can't move anywhere. You'll start by pressing with your hands placed at the lower chest area and eventually place them a little bit lower, press, a little bit lower, press until you're hitting it down by the waistline. 
Then you wanna start holding the bottom of the pseudo planche push up for time with your hands by your waistline at least 20 seconds. Once you've mastered all this comfortably with perfect form, you're ready to move on to the next progression. All right, moving on to the fourth progression. This is gonna level up the previous progression. And that's why you wanna make sure to really master that pseudo planche hold. We're gonna be going for 90 degree alternating toe taps. And with this progression, you're gonna feel a real 90 degree hold even for just one second. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like and then break it down for you. Make sure that you can lean far enough forward then you're gonna lift up one leg and then alternate them. At the beginning, you may feel like you're jumping up and coming down pretty hard. That's okay, the more you do it, the stronger you're gonna get. But eventually, you'll be able to switch and alternate a lot slower. The goal is actually to raise your leg versus kicking and jumping off. All right, there you have the 90 degree hold alternating toe taps. So you wanna be able to do the 90 degree alternating toe taps for at least 10 reps with perfect form comfortably, and then you're ready for the last and final progression. All right, we're ready for the final progression. If you mastered the previous progression, then you should already be on your way to kind of holding the 90, but this one is gonna solidify it. We're gonna be going for 90 degree lean plus raises. It's just like the previous progression, but instead of lifting one leg, we're gonna lift both legs off the ground by leaning forward and then place them back down. Remember, if you're not leaning forward enough and your hands aren't by your waistline, your lower body is never Never gonna get off the ground. You need to meet that balance point and have enough body weight on the opposing side, your upper body, to be able to raise your lower body. So now we'll finally get to apply it. I'm gonna go for a couple reps, show you what it looks like, then break it down. So as you can see, there's no jumping with this exercise. I'm leaning forward enough until my feet just raise off the ground. And every other previous progression is building you up for this. That's why you don't want to skip any progressions and you want to master each one, build that solid foundation. Remember, the reverse leg raises and reverse leg extensions is what's going to help you raise your lower body off the ground. So make sure to really diligently work those as well if you're having trouble with that. Also keep in mind as you're leaning forward and you're ready to raise your legs that you give an extra contraction on your hands as well as the rest of your body to make sure that you're giving enough push to maintain that body position. And just like the previous progression with the alternating toe taps at the beginning you may be going up and down really quickly but the more you do this you'll be able to go up nice and slow come down nice and slow until you're able to just come up and just hold it even if it's for a second or two do it every minute on the minute and increase that whole time all right now moving on to the third and final skill you're going to be a well-rounded and complete athlete after this i'm going to be showing you how to hold your entire body weight from an inverted position with perfect balance and that's going to be the handstand hold developing insane balance coordination physique and strength in your upper body don't worry about any excuses you may have if you're not strong enough or have enough coordination, we're gonna be building all of that up from the very beginning, just like all the previous skills. So the very first progression we'll be getting into is gonna be a pike hold, and it's gonna have other variations as well that we'll get into right after. Let me show it to you, and then I'll break it down. I start off in a push-up position and then I walk back with my core tight on the tips of my toes and straight locked out legs as I move up. Your hips want to be the highest point, kind of like a triangle. You want to be in a straight line from your hands to your hips and your hips to your toes. Engaging your core, your grip on the ground, your shoulders and everything else with your arms straight and locked out. All right, there you have it. Most simple progression, a pike hold. You wanna be able to hold this position for at least 45 seconds. And this is a relatively easy exercise, so you'll be able to do it pretty quickly. And that's why you wanna add more variations to this movement. Once you can comfortably hold a pike hold, then you wanna move into holding a pike hold and doing shoulder taps, doing pike hold push-ups and then eventually moving into pike walks. All of these are gonna strengthen your shoulders, preparing to eventually hold your entire body weight inverted on your shoulders in a handstand position. And with the strength you'll gain from these exercises, you'll be able to increase the difficulty and creating even more resistance to your pike by elevating your feet, doing an elevated pike hold. And once you can do the different elevated pike variations, the shoulder taps for at least 10 in a row, elevated pike push-ups for at least 10 in a row, and the elevated pike hold for at least 20 to 30 seconds, then you're ready to move on to the next progression. But keep in mind, if you want more information, a complete breakdown on how to do this with routines, complete guide step-by-step step on the master your handstands. All you have to do is download the Thenix app in the App Store or Google Play Store, or just hit the link down in the description below. And you can also check out the many other handstand videos that I've done right here on this channel that go way more in depth, full 20 minute video, for example, this one on how to handstand hold. But the next progression we're gonna be going for is gonna be wall walks. I'm gonna show you how to do it, and then I'm gonna break it down for you. So to start off, you wanna be in a push-up position, then put one foot against the wall and slowly start to walk back and walk with your feet and your hands at the same time. You also don't wanna take big steps with your hands and feet. You wanna take smaller steps with your hands and feet so it's a lot more comfortable. You also wanna make sure to maintain your core strength and maintain your body in a straight line. And when you're doing this for the first time, you don't have to walk up all the way up the wall. Just walk up as high as you comfortably can and then come back down. 
All right, so there we have the wall walks. Eventually, you're gonna build the shoulder strength and the confidence to go higher and higher until eventually your chest is just flat against the wall. Then you can go ahead and walk all the way back down, but go at your own pace starting off and eventually work your way up to that. You're really gonna need to master all the previous progressions to have the strength to be able to do this. So master this until you can reach all the way to the top and be able to do it comfortably with perfect form for at least four to five reps. Once you can do that, you're ready to move on to one of the last progressions. All right, so by this point, you should have developed the strength to be able to hold your entire body weight inverted, especially if you mastered those wall walks. And we're gonna be applying that in these last progressions, starting off with a handstand kick up. So to start off, we're gonna start in a push-up position, specifically a runner start position. You wanna be staring at a point on the ground that's above your hands, so your hands and the point that you're staring at make a triangle. And you never wanna look away from this spot because any micro movement of your head is drastically gonna push your body either backwards or forwards. You want your hands placed shoulder width apart and you want your fingertips aligned with the tip of your shoulders. From here, you're gonna kick with your bent leg and swing with your straight leg while leading with your hips, meaning that the first thing to come up should be your hips and your feet should follow along with it. That's when you wanna start pairing both of your legs together until you reach the top of the wall and you want to be in a tight straight line always in fact when it comes to kicking up and holding a handstand you want to be in a completely stacked position think of your body as a stack of books it's gonna be a lot easier to walk around with a stack of books than if the stack of books were all staggered it's gonna be a lot easier to fall over when you're walking around so keep that in mind when you're doing anything inverted that has to do with handstands and once you're finally able to kick up and hold it against the wall it's just a matter of holding it for time as well as increasing your kick up reps now these are two things that you can train separately train for increasing your hold time once you kick up, starting off with 10 seconds, moving on to 15, 20, eventually one minute, and separately training your handstand kickups, just kicking up against into the wall until you're comfortably in a handstand and coming back down and doing it for a couple reps, like five to 10 reps per set. That's gonna solidify your handstand kick up and develop the proper strength and balance to be able to kick up into a handstand wherever you're at. Now, once you can hold a handstand kick up against the wall, you can pretty much already handstand. All you have to do is learn how to balance, and that's gonna be different techniques like finger pressing and releasing, pulsing the pressure in your fingertips until your feet pry off the wall, and then releasing the pressure in your fingertips so that your feet can come back. That's how you balance in a handstand. But for a complete breakdown on how to do this perfectly, just watch the video I uploaded not too long ago on how to handstand hold, where I break down the whole entire handstand step by step, as well as the finger pressing technique a lot more in depth. So check out that video and definitely download the Thenix app in the App Store or Google Play Store to get the full technique guide, where we also provide you routines to do every week to make sure that you're progressing and eventually mastering your handstand hold. So make sure that you're practicing all three of these skills that you could be training anywhere and start taking your training to the next level. Transform your physique and transform your capabilities, not just look strong actually being strong so if you enjoyed this video and you learned something please I'd really appreciate it if you smash that like button it helps YouTube share our videos to more people out there and to show my appreciation if you comment down below within 30 minutes of any upload you're always gonna have a chance to win some free the next year so make sure you hit the subscribe button right now with bell notifications on so that you never miss out on a video we post every single Monday by 11 a.m. USA Eastern time again thank you guys so much for watching if there's anything that you'd like me to cover or something that you're struggling with let me know down in the comment section below and I'll definitely make it into a video and if you enjoyed this video learning some new skills, check out this other video I made on how to do a muscle up and I'll see you there. My love, peace out.